Hello, my name is Thomas Sinnige, and I'm an assistant professor in the Flight Performance and Propulsion section at the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering. In this video, we will discuss opportunities for improved propulsion integration for more sustainable aircraft. The previous lectures already discussed several novel aircraft concepts with increased energy efficiency compared to conventional aircraft configurations. In order to achieve such an increase in energy efficiency, we need to improve performance on several aspects. In terms of the propulsion system, we require highly efficient propulsors and highly efficient integration of these propulsors with the airframe. Moreover, we may need to fly lower and slower to minimize the environmental impact of aircraft operation. Finally, of course, we also need low weight and high aerodynamic efficiency. At this point, we might reach a surprising conclusion. Actually, propeller propulsion may be a great match for these requirements. But wait, aren't propellers old-fashioned? Propellers were used on the first powered flight in 1903. So surely we should have come up with something better by now, right? Well, in fact, we did not, because propellers are the most efficient aircraft propulsion system available, with propulsor efficiencies reaching up to 90%. Another benefit is that propellers combine very well with electric propulsion systems. In this way, local emissions can be eliminated. Also, electric motors can be scaled relatively easily to a smaller size without significant performance penalty. This enables a more flexible distribution of engines over the airframe than what we're used to with gas turbines. Therefore, it brings an opportunity for novel aircraft designs with smart propeller integration solutions. The promise of this smart integration of the propellers with the airframe has led to a large number of design concepts with different integration strategies. What these designs have in common is that the propulsors are distributed over the airframe and positioned at unconventional locations. Examples include propellers at the wingtips, propellers mounted to the horizontal tailplane, ducted rotors integrated with the empennage, boundary layer ingesting propellers at the rear fuselage, and also distributed propellers at the wing leading edge or more aft along the wing cord. Each of these concepts features enhanced aerodynamic performance due to beneficial aerodynamic interactions between the propulsors and the airframe. Now let's consider two examples in more detail. The first is the wingtip mounted propeller. As you have seen before in the course, the wingtip vortex is responsible for lift-induced drag, which amounts to about 30 to 50% of the total aircraft drag in cruise. By positioning the propeller at the wingtip, we modify the flow field experienced by the wing. Behind the propeller, in the propeller slipstream, there is an increased axial velocity compared to the freestream, while there is also a swirling motion. The wing, therefore, will experience a higher inflow velocity, which leads to higher lift. Due to the swirl, the propeller will induce an upwash on the wing, which leads to a forward tilting of the lift vector, and thus a reduction of the lift-induced drag. As a result, drag reductions in cruise of up to 15% have been measured compared to a conventional propeller wing layout. For this to work, the propeller needs to rotate in opposite direction to the wingtip vortex. Another way to achieve improved wing performance is by distributing a series of propellers along the wing leading edge. This leads to lift augmentation due to the increased axial velocity in the propeller slipstream. For a given lift requirement, this can be exploited in two different ways. One option is to reduce the wing size while maintaining the freestream velocity. This leads to lower friction drag. The other option is to reduce the freestream velocity while maintaining the wing size. This leads to lower noise emissions and shorter takeoff and landing runs. Because the propellers now are so close together, they will interact with each other. This leads to a modification of the slipstream characteristics and also the noise emissions. 
One technique to control the resulting adverse effects is by synchrophasing the propellers. With such technique, the azimuthal angle between the blades of the adjacent propellers is optimized to minimize adverse interactions. Of course, the performance benefits that we just discussed do not come without challenges. The propeller slipstream flow field is actually very complex and includes time-dependent features. Therefore, the resulting aerodynamic interactions on the airframe will be unsteady. Moreover, because of the close coupling between the propellers and the airframe, the propeller blades will experience changes in loading during the rotation. This leads to additional noise and vibrations. Besides, there are also challenges at aircraft integration level that require attention, such as complexity of the systems, weight increases, impact on stability and control, and also certification challenges. In this lecture, we have seen that propeller propulsion is an attractive option to achieve more sustainable aviation. By integrating the propellers in a smart way with the airframe, performance benefits can be obtained that will be key to achieving more efficient aircraft designs. This does not come without challenges, which are the scope of ongoing research. If we manage to tackle these challenges, we can make novel aircraft designs with improved propeller integration in reality and thereby make aviation more sustainable.